So, we've decided to move the horses earlier this year just because it's so wet for them in that field now. Um, and now we've had the dumper in there as well. It's, it's just getting wet and we don't want to churn the field up too much. So whilst the quad bike's been fixed, we're going to move them to another field where there's a good load of grass where I don't have to feed them for a few days. So it's, we're not going to be damaging the fields as much. And um, it's also the driest in the farm. So we've, we normally move them the beginning of March. It's only a week early. I think they're going to be very happy about it. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to do a boundary check, make sure the fencing's secure, and then I'm going to move them in. in the morning and the sun is just insanely beautiful and bright already heat coming from it I woke up this morning and I was so excited having the light coming through the window I just had to get out here um, and see them and just lap up the Sun and you know we're all probably a bit deficient from the Sun this time of year so it's taking in every bit you can and these guys are drinking it up, positioned in the perfect spot to just receive that morning sunlight, heat from the sun. Some of them are grazing, some of them are dozing. Here I am with Rudy again. He's uh, my March boy, it would seem, and he's quietly resting here and kindly letting me just hang out next to him. And you know, despite all this coronavirus that's happening in the world out there right now, I always find March to be quite a crazy month anyway. It's a month where it's neither here nor there. It, I always get excited when March comes, thinking we've made it through winter. Um, you know, and the, the buds are starting to come out, the, there's daffodils coming out, the blossoms starting to come out, the trees are, are just starting. And it's a really, really lovely time. And we've got a lot of wild garlic here, and that is just starting, the smell of it is just starting to um come through and it is amazing it's just divine i get really really excited by it but march is still a month that kind of is neither here nor there in the sense of um you know it still is quite cold 
can be quite wet and bleak at times and yet you get these amazing days in between which is just full of sunshine and warmth in that sunshine and it's beautiful and it's this time of year the horses are starting to molt and so we're just going through that shedding of the coat where they're kind of in that in-between stage too and yeah it's just it's a funny transitional time of year um but exciting you know heading into spring and then into summer so it's a good thing and right now even though it is a very overcast day it's still nice out here it's very quiet and uh calm Isn't it? So for me, I know spring has arrived. I know that transition of the season is happening when I hear those geese. And now they'll be flying over for weeks. So the lighter nights bring everybody out. Here's Sky, our cat. She's uh, accompanied me out to see the horses this evening. Now she's just waiting for me. We're gonna walk back together. It's a beautiful bird song tonight. Here we are, walking up the hill. <laughs> Where are you going? She decided to get down. Oh, it takes so long when she comes to a walk with me. And she's now deaf, practically. And um, so she does that meow call that the cats do to one another so that they know where, where each other is. Her meow is so loud now, she's lost some of her hearing. And, um, come on. But, um, so sometimes it's just easier to carry her, but she's decided no, she's gonna bring herself up tonight. So, let's see how long this walk actually takes me. <laughs> okay, so not as long as I thought. She obviously got the message. It's getting dark now. She obviously wants to come home. So, here we are back. Again, going in now for the evening, and um, everyone seems to be happy out here. All the sheep, the donkeys, the horses. So, good night. I find everything going on with the coronavirus quite interesting at the moment in the sense of noticing two parallel worlds. You've got human society as we know it spinning into chaos and in many senses falling apart. And yet, we, because we live rurally, you know, we only need to step out the door and we're surrounded by nature. I'm just really noticing how nothing has changed in that, in that sense and how the herd still goes about their business the same 
their needs are still the same, we're still feeding them a bit of hay this time of year. The birds are the same, you know, they're nesting. The foxes, the badgers, everyone's going about their business in the same way. All the buds on the trees and the plants are starting to come out now. Everything's carrying on. The only thing that has stopped is us as a species, as a race. And just to notice that, these two parallel worlds, is quite interesting when really we should be part of this world. We should be part of nature. It's a stark contrast to kind of realize how disconnected we've become. And then you see in the news how like the canals in Venice have started to clear and I think there's a dolphin that's been sighted in it and wild boar in the cities of Spain and pollution levels coming down from some of the big cities in different countries. It really feels like nature is taking back. Nature as soon as we step out the way, you know, nature just carries on, nature gets on with it. Um, and so I really hope, you know, whilst I understand there's a lot of devastation for a lot of people, health-wise or financially, we've been hit financially too, but in some ways, you know, I just hope that we can find a connection back to nature that we didn't have before all this happened. Because it's such a wonderful thing that's around us and it's so well known now that it's so good for our mental health for one reason. And, and I think it's a shame. I think it's a shame for us, for the other species, for the planet, not to be a part of this and not to be treading a bit more carefully and appreciating this. It's beautiful. I mean, what's, what's not to love about it? his own mind and just is who he is. The story I love to tell about Rudy was when he first came to me, I was still riding. Um, still putting shoes on them, still rugging, still putting them in stables, blah, blah, blah. And he had really poor feet. And so the farrier suggested that I turn him away for the summer. So he put some shoes on him and said to take him a supplement every day to help the hoof um, grow and uh, gain more condition. So every day I'd turn up to the field and it was on a big hill, 12 acre field and I'd climb through the fence and walk up the hill and then take him out the gate at the top so the others could, other horses couldn't um, steal it and feed it to him. And he started to cotton on to that and he would be waiting for me at the bottom of the hill. And I turned up one day and he was waiting for me and as I was climbing through the fence I noticed one of his shoes had come off and just chatting away to him, I was like, oh, Rudy, I can't believe your shoes come off, you know, your foot's going to be more damaged, blah, 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 whatever those fears and thoughts were at the time. So there I am, just chatting away to myself, like, great. And we start walking up the hill, and he's walking in front of me. And it was a bit of a comedy act, really, because he's walking up, and... And then he stopped, and I'm so in my head, kind of like, oh, about him losing this shoe. 
I kind of walked into the back of him. Not literally, but sort of. And I kind of peered round and I said, Rudy, what are you doing? And he turned his head and looked at me, round at me like this. And then he brought his head back round and he pointed his nose to the ground. And that was where his shoe was. So here we are in this 12 acre field and he's led me to his shoe. <laughs> and shown me where it is he lost it. I mean, there's intelligence for you. I just, he's just amazing this horse. He's just amazing. He just makes my heart smile. when I was mucking out 12 horses a day and that would mean I'd be filling up 12 hay nets a day times two I'd be filling up 12 water buckets a day at least three times a day each bucket then I'd be riding as many horses as I could then I'd be fulfilling whatever care the individual horse needed and those were my days and they were absolutely jam-packed and yet I still never felt fully fulfilled in the relationship I had with them and it wasn't until I turned them back out into this more natural environment and let them reform as a herd um, that actually the relationship started to really blossom and that's because they don't have to rely on me anymore in the same way that they were doing so before they don't need me to come and let them out the stable um, to ensure that they get exercise or to socialize with others. They don't have to wait for me to bring a feed to them because they're out here and they can still browse on the grass and the hedgerows and whatever else is around. And what that allows for is a more organic point of connection to form between us because nothing's been forced. I'm not making them connect with me. I can't when they're in this space. They have that choice to move away from me if they don't want to be with any human contact. Other days I really notice different horses at different times will want that and they'll seek that out whether that's to come and hang out next to me or they want to scratch or anything like that. Uh, like this little guy here. <laughs> um, and it's just a much more natural and organic way of being with them and it's just so much more fulfilling isn't it so much more fulfilling because it feels like it's an even relationship and it's not one-sided and I'm not running around just in the starting blocks just to make sure that the basics are being met as in a clean stable and um and food for them <laughs> 